y'all. Are we live yet? We are. We're live. Hello. Welcome, one and all, to Tea Time with Jacksepticeye. And now, Tea Time with Jacksepticeye. I know, it's super late for a lot of people. Currently, 1.20 a.m. for me. But I was in the mood to stream. I was in the mood to do a little FaceTime. Because I'm trying out new software as well, so it's also an excuse to do that. But hey, how's it going, bros? My name is the PewDiePie. It's not really me. Sorry, disappointing everybody. But this is nice. This is, this is tasty. So I, I usually use um, OBS, just regular OBS, but now I'm using OBS Studio, which Robin told me to get up and start using. So I think it's nice. I think it's good. Hello. Everyone's saying things to me. Hello. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out different versions of the software and trying to figure out the best settings. And I think I just need to update my computer. Because many of you were at the Overwatch stream last night. Last night? Was it last night? Or the night before? I can't remember. Many of you were at the Overwatch one. I was having some serious issues when it came to lag. So... I'm trying to figure out better ways of doing this and smarter ways of doing it, so. Are you drunk? No, I'm not. I'm drinking tea. I'm not trying to be drunk. If, if I ever get drunk, I waste so much time. There's so much time when I don't know what's going on. I'm just sitting here giggling. Or if I get that drunk, I just, I don't know, can't remember what's happening. Um, so no, I'm not drunk. I, I don't try to be drunk, guys. I have other shit to be doing. Uh, I need, I'm going to tweet out about this. So I need, like, I need a sick tweet. Like, the sickest of tweets. If anyone can actually think of one. I mean, I didn't call it tea time. Get drunk and go. <laughs> uh, what type of tea? Just regular old Lime's Gold Blend. Just black tea with milk in it. Kind of like Earl Grey tea. Um, super late chill tea time stream. Uh, th this isn't going to go on too long either. It's going to be like an hour. Well, I say that all the time and then I change my mind. And then it's going way longer than it's supposed to. But it's super late here. It's almost 1.30 a.m. And sleep does have to happen. Surprisingly. Fuck your girlfriend. Really? Like, you had your one shot to be in chat. You, you sat there on your computer and you were like, oh, what should I type? I know. This will get him. This will get everyone. That's the mark you want to leave in the world? Fuck your girlfriend. There's better ways to be spending your time and your energy and your words. Why is the thumbnail Overwatch? Yeah, I forgot to change this. <laughs> you can tell how much I stream. Uh, typing this on my computer so I don't have any tea emojis. Is there, is there a tea emoji on... Oh, holy fuck. There's a hot beverage and there's a tea cup without a handle. Hell yeah, I'm putting in this one. Fucking tea. It's kind of tea bag. I should have just put in like a saxophone or something for the, the jazz that's going on. Sick. I love how when I tweet it out, it still has the same stuff from ages ago. The, the tweet, you, you can see right now, it has an Overwatch thumbnail and it says tea time, right? And the hot pot is shite. But when I tweeted it out, it said Happy Easter and it had the old thumbnail. Like even when I change stuff, it doesn't change. So if you're on Twitter right now, ha Happy Easter, I guess. Uh, Mazel Tov, tea time. It's full 30 in the fucking morning. I just saw arse fly by in the chat. Who's saying arse? But happy Saturday! How's you guys' day going? I, I just got back from the cinema. Well, a couple hours ago. Me and Boosh went to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It was good. I was good as the first one. And not like an amazing movie or anything, but it was very good. Popcorn movie. Where you can just sit down and turn off your brain and just enjoy some nice fun action and jokes. And funny characters. I like it a lot. I, I'm a big fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> movies. Aha! Aha! <laughs> um, so that was fun. But then that, and then we played Overwatch. We just kicked some ass in Overwatch. Uh, I'm not playing Overwatch right now. In this stream. Like, at all. I'm reading your chat. Hi, how's it going? Are you going to do another bro average video? No. I'm going to leave that just as the one thing. That was, that was just like a little spoof parody of like the do perfect trick shot type of video. So, I'm not going to do any more of them, personally. I'm going to leave it there. I mean, what else can I do when you repeat the same kinds of jokes? So, I'm not going to do that. God, why does OBS use? Because I have an older CPU in this computer. The one that's not really perfect for streaming and encoding and all that kind of stuff. So, when I have like Chrome and stuff open at the same time, it kind of fucks it up. It says that I'm using 47% of my CPU. Why? I don't even fucking do anything that great. What? 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 What are you telling me? Go away. Do do do. Do 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 Maybe you already make a live stream of Overwatch, but it didn't upload or something. It, it uploaded regularly, like all the streams do. They, they archive to YouTube anyway. But I, I didn't upload it or I didn't keep it up because it was just... It was a really shit uh, stream. Because I couldn't play because I was getting like 14 FPS, 24 FPS, 30 FPS. Like going up and down constantly so I couldn't play. I, I just think it was really shit to watch, so I just took it down. Sorry. I'm going to pop out chat or something. My whole computer's lagging. I, I badly need a new computer. Which I'm gonna do when I move. I'm gonna get a, a new computer and keep that. I'm gonna pop out chat and close the actual stream. Hopefully it stays running. Um, because the CPU I have in this computer is a, an i7 4770K. Which is still good. It's still good to play games really well, but my computer's just so bloated full of shit. I wanna make a, like, purely dedicated gaming and streaming computer and leave all the, leave all the kind of editing software and everything off of it. Because it's just not worth it. There we go. Now stuff's running. Pretty boring. Well, I'm sorry. Stream is called tea time. I don't know what you're fucking expecting. Do you like Chinese food? I love Chinese food. I love all types of food. Go 
AMD Ryzen. That's a thing. I wanted, for any of you who don't know, AMD brought out a new set of processors called the Ryzen processors, RYZN, and they're supposed to be really good for, like, video encoding and streaming and different things like that. Applications outside of gaming they're supposed to be really quick at. So I kind of want to build one just to see what it's like to try it out. Maybe build, like, a dedicated streaming and gaming PC that way and just test it out. I don't know. The benchmarks are looking really good for that. I still find it funny how people are still like, you're moving? I must have said it like a billion times by now. Like, not to say that you should know. It's just, it's, it's funny how many times I've said it and it still try, like, slips through the cracks for a lot of people. Um, my tea's already gone. <laughs> tea time stream. I'm Irish. We love our tea. Oh, God, it's moving fast. Jack, how are you reading these comments are going by so fast? Aha! Uh -huh. Good, good eyes. Mark's streaming right now, too. What's your game, boy? No game. I know those guys are streaming. Um, I'm not trying to undercut them or anything. This is just like a spontaneous one off, very quick little stream because I have nothing else to do. Um, but yeah, those guys have been streaming all day as well. And they're doing a bang up job. And I'm proud of them. So, I, I should actually say something about that because they're, donate, or they're streaming for charity. They're streaming for the Environmental Defense Fund. Um, so, I, I feel like it's only right to like, try and plug that as well and say that they're doing a really good thing over there. And if you have time and money that you have to spare that you can donate, then by all means donate. It, it really helps out. What type of microphone do you use? This one. A Neumann U87 AI. If you're, if you're doing YouTube, you're not buying this microphone. <laughs> this is like a, a high-end studio microphone that would be wasted on just YouTube. I got it because I do stuff outside of YouTube that involves voice stuff. Which something I, I had a part in voicing was Pinstripe. That game that just came out. That you can go check out. I don't have like a big role in it or anything, but there's two sections of me in the game that I want to sit down and stream that at some point as well. So we can sit down and I have a couple of lines in there. The guy who made the game, super nice guy. I wish him all the best with the sales of that game. So if you like the game, I definitely recommend getting it. Because it's cool. And the guy, he just loves making games and I can tell he has a lot of passion for it. It was really nice talking to him and he's super sweet, so... Every little helps. When do you think you'll play another team co-op with Bob? Soon, hopefully. I love my little sessions with Bob. They're super fun. We just can't really find many games to play together. It's hard. Oh yeah, the ending of Outlast went up today. Did y'all watch it? I know the last episode was like two hours long, so not a lot of people will have time today to probably watching it. So, but it, it was fun. I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed that series, because I really enjoyed it. And the last episode I made super long, just for the sake of... Because I feel like when you get to the end of games like that, if you cut it off halfway through, like the finale, it kind of feels uh, a little, kind of feels like you're taking away the momentum, and I like to keep that going. Sean, do a lovely papyrus voice. Hmm. What would you like me to say? I can say all manner of things. I just have to think about it with my brain. The good papyrus voice, well, the one I do, which is kind of the same one as Ross does, which is just Skeletor from D-Man, is to just talk from like here, eh, eh, close up your neck, and just talk like right, right in that section. I don't know how to explain it. That's how I do voices. Whenever I hear somebody do a voice, I hear it, and then I'm like, okay, what part of the neck is that using? And then I just mimic it. And then, but that, if, like, if that's how you operate, it's like right in here. <laughs> like, um, Scaramouche from Samurai Jack, the new season of Samurai Jack. Scaramouche! Oh! Jack! Bam! <laughs> I love that guy so much. Um, and the other thing I do with the Pirate's voice is always roll your R's! Because he's always talking about getting recognition! <laughs> it sucks as well, because I got much better at doing the voice <laughs> after I finished the series. So if I went back to do it now, I'd be so much better at it, but... Game's over, bro. Can you do the Tammy voice? Oi, I'm Tim. This is my friend Tim. <laughs> that voice came about because that's the way I talked like that in real life. It was, a, it was a phase I went through where I'd say stuff to Cena like that. Like, oh, I look good. <laughs> I still gotta do it, so. When the character came up, it just seemed like the perfect character to do that voice for. How do you do accents? I don't know. How does anybody do any voices? You just kind of hear it. Some people can just hear them and do them. I'm kind of, I, I used to mimic things a lot when I was younger. And I'm by no means like great at them. But I used to mimic things a lot when I was younger and then... And then you kind of just get a knack for it. After, after you do it a lot, and after you try and do weird, shitty voices over and over again, you kind of figure out how to manipulate your voice pretty well for it. How to do the Rick and Morty voice? Oh, my Rick and Morty impressions are pretty shit. Well, my... Mm, Morty is, um... It's pretty good. Because that's just my fucking voice anyway. That's, that's one thing I like about Justin Roiling, because I share a very similar vocal range with him, I think. We're both kind of higher-pitched people, and all his voices end up in the, the higher range, like Lemon Grab and Brendan Blandon. A lot of his voices just sound the same. So I, I always kind of look up to his voices for stuff like that. He's just a weirdo. Right, for Morty, you just make your voice break. Uh, Rick, um... It's more of the me-think voice, though. I'm Mr. Me-think! Look at me! That, that voice you have to do, your voice has to go to do that, because Justin's voice did, went when he did that voice. She's still there, Beth! So your voice has to have that, ah, where it's all gone. And then I can't do a Rick voice. A Rick voice is just, uh, Morty! You should way up your ass, Morty! Nah. It's bad. <laughs> hey, Jack, guess what? Dicks! <laughs> That's funny as fuck! Right on, my dude. <laughs> You got called out on Max Stream. A lot of people just went over there and gave some money to it because you were saying stuff about it. The fans are awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Good job. It's always, it's always good to support charity in whatever way possible. And that's the thing. A lot of people think supporting charity is just donating, but a lot of the time it's just saying something about it and spreading it to other people. And then the more people hear about it, you get to, like, it's like retweets on Twitter. It starts reaching more people that probably wouldn't have seen it naturally, and the more it spreads around, then the more people are made aware of it. And then the people who probably didn't know about it before, who do have money to spare, can end up donating because of what you say. So, 
every little bit helps, man. It's all good. And charity's a great cause. That's something I wanted to kind of do when I move to. I get a really good PC, and I'll, I'll try and stream a bit more. And hopefully do some more charity stuff. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Turn slow mode off, please, Jack. Are you seeing the freaking chat? Chat's all I'm reading right now, and it's insane. And I can't even keep up with it. And that's with slow mode at 240 seconds per comment. So if I turn that off, it's just gonna be a shit show. Do, 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 do. Jack, do the flowery voice, please. Say this, you idiot frisk. No one will love me, so why should you? Oh god, what was my flowery voice? <laughs> you idiot frisk! No one will ever love you! Or love me, so why should you? <laughs> it's kinda like the, the anti stuff. Kinda like my version of what a joker would be. I never watch Rick and Morty. Boy! <laughs> Why? Rick and Morty's not... Well, I can, I can get it if people... If it's not their type of humor. Because it's a very specific type of thing. It's exactly my type of humor. And I love it so much. Hey, Jack. What's this game, what's this game called? Because the graphics are shit. Uh, this game's called Life. Um, It's 475,000. Uh, over like five years. Uh, if you want to do college in the game, it costs a considerable amount more depending on where you're playing it from, what region you are. It's not region locked though. Um, and it runs at 600 frames per second. But it, it also has permadeath in it, so it's not really for everybody. It also has crafting. And like a, a food mechanic. It's an alright game. Graphics are kind of shit. <laughs> Jack, did you like Outlast 2? I did. It, overall, I like the game. And I like the series. And I like how much we all got into it. And the story and all that kind of stuff. There are some points that really let me down and were disappointing. And could have been done way better. But overall, I, I think it was a, a fun series to do. Just got a bit repetitive after a while. Which is Outlast in a nutshell. There's much horror in a nutshell. Because I keep coming back to games like... I mean, you can't really compare because Amnesia came out at a time when nobody was doing AAA horror really anymore. So when that came out, that was like a big deal. And it, like the repetition in that, yeah, I can forgive it because of the time it came out. Not a lot of people were trying a lot of things. They didn't have a gargantuan budget. It wasn't a massive game. It just blew up because of the internet and because of YouTube and people like Felix who were doing the game and people like Mark who were doing the game. So I always like to compare stuff to like Alien Isolation. I consider Alien Isolation one of the best horror games to come out in a long time because of the pacing. The pacing is everything in a horror game. And that's why some of the like Silent Hills and everything were really good because they were paced very well. And games these days are all about, they're all worried about losing the player's attention. So they shove shit in your face all the time. If you're not getting scared, they don't really have a story to back it up. And sometimes they're afraid that their story isn't going to carry the game, so they have no faith in it. And then they end up throwing scares at you constantly. So the pacing always ends up getting really messed up. But Alien Isolation did it really well, because it set up a lot of stuff. And at the start, you can't really fight back, and there's no alien around. It's kind of like synths that are walking around synthetics. And you don't really know what's going on. And then the alien shows up, and there's just one enemy. But it's super powerful, super unpredictable, and very, very strong. And can kill you in one hit. But you can also hide, and it, you, you can't fight back at first. You just have to get your wits about you. And then later on, they were like, oh, well, you're probably bored of that now, just hiding from the aliens. So here's a flamethrower. So now it's a resource management kind of game. It's a resource management. It's a survival horror in that respect. So instead of having to hide, you can kind of fight back and you can like, take the fight to the alien. It still showed up, it still scared you, and it was a different type of horror. So it evolved very well. It still should have ended like two hours earlier, but that game is just really well paced. And that's something that a lot of games seem to not understand. Outlast bothers me because the first one was fine when you couldn't fight back because it was like, okay, whatever, you're trying this thing. And that was also a AAA horror game. We hadn't seen one in a while by the time that came out, but now we've seen a lot of horror games. And they didn't really break new ground or anything. They kind of relied on some of the things they did in Outlast 1, and they brought it into Outlast 2, and it didn't really work as well with like the camera stuff. It's still cool, but it makes less sense in Outlast 2, I think. You are a cameraman, but at the end of the day, you have to think, like, wait, why am I recording this kind of thing? Well, it's still a it's fucking video game. Who cares? But just different things like that, and they rely too much on the same types of scares, and it was just chase after chase after chase after chase, and that got exhausting after a while, but it's not like I'm shitting all over the game. I still love the setting and the style and the atmosphere and the, the sound design and things like that. I just like when things are paced well when it comes to movies or games. I'm very big on things like that. It did kind of make me want to go back and play the first Outlast again, because a lot of stuff has come out for the first Outlast since, like comics and everything, divulging more in the story and the characters that were in, because there's a lot of stuff in it that I did not get. And then reading up on the wikis today, I was like, oh, when did they say this? And I seen this one that they said it in comics, and I didn't know. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm still reading chat, by the way. I'm just scrolling through it. It's very, very fast. Which is very sweet. Thank you all for being here. I can't even see how many people are here right now, because I had the chat popped out. Whoops. My bad. How many people are here? Because, ah, I can hear myself. I can see 17,000, holy shit. Thanks, guys. That's super sweet. You guys are the best. Where are my testicles, Summer? Where are my testicles? Solid reference. Would you play an Outlast 2 DLC if it came out tomorrow? Sure. It's not going to, <laughs> but sure. Okay, I'm trying to stop the chat and go back up and see some things. I'm playing Dark Souls 3. Solid choice. The Dark Souls 1 was better and Bloodborne's better, but Dark Souls 3 is still pretty fucking good. It's like... <laughs> Dark Souls games, it's like Dark Souls 2 and 3 I didn't like as much, but at the same time, I'd still rather play them than 80% of other video games, just because I love those games so much. What's your thoughts on Daddy 5 I mean, what's there to say? People abusing their kids for views, and not really seeing the harm that it could do long term? It's, it's super fucked up. I, I'm not a fan at all. And then, like, they came out and said, oh, it was all acting and everything, and even though I don't think it's acting, because that I can, I can spot fakery a fucking mile away. 
Uh, it's one of the reasons I told you guys before. I'm a good judge of character. I like when I watch movies. I get super focused in on acting, and I it involves myself in performances and how people behave and everything. I can tell fakery a mile away. Like any prank video I watch, I'm like, do people really believe that that actually happened? And people aren't just reacting like a human being would. Um, so even even if the kids were acting, which they're not, it's still fucked up. It's like you're still promoting this really awful side of your family and the way you behave around your kids and everything. It's still, like saying that it's acting was supposed to make it okay. Like it's still terrible. What do you think of the world, Julian? I'm gonna tell you something. The world is a pretty fucked up place. The world has a lot of shit in it. A lot of crap going on in the world right now. And we live in a very weird time in history. Where so many countries are all at each other's throats and don't really know what's going on. But at the same time, the world is a freaking fantastic place to be. Like, as much shit is going on as there is going on, there's a million more beautiful things in the world to see. And it's so easy to focus on the crap that's going on and forget about all the majesty and the beauty that's around us every day. The fact that I like, get to sit down and talk to you guys and the fact that you're here on the internet being able to see a green-haired Irishman talk about the world right now is still a pretty spectacular thing to happen. It's just we forget about those things because... It becomes everyday life. But the world, the world needs some fixing. And we all need to be more open-minded towards each other and communicative towards each other. Not, not so closed off, not closing down these doors and closing down our windows and not talking to each other. Open up. Share ideas with people. If they don't agree with them, who cares? You still have your ideas. If, some, if you talk to somebody and they don't share the same ideas as you, that's perfectly fine. They don't need to. Go out and the amount of people who don't agree with some of the things I say. I probably uh, disagree with some of the things I say right now. Perfectly fine. The problem comes when people just say, fuck you, you're wrong, and then run away or punch you and walk away. Doo -doo -doo. Jack, can you make it so that we can donate? This is a big point of contention for me lately because you brought in this thing called Super Chat where you can turn on and people can donate a certain amount of money and then their messages get highlighted in chat. I can't turn it on even if I wanted to because I live in Ireland and it's not available here. It's like America, UK, those are like the two countries I know. And it's weird because... Like, I get it, I get why Super Chat was introduced, but it's also really easy to exploit because I can easily turn on Super Chat and people would just start donating to have their stuff pop up and it's super generous and like helping out your favorite creators is a very admirable and very respectable thing to do, but I feel like I'd be taking advantage of people. Because, I, like, I, I, I don't know, it's a weird thing. Because, I, I, like, if a smaller YouTuber is struggling month to month on their YouTube salary, and they really want to make YouTube work, and rent is becoming, like, a really increasingly scary thing to not be able to afford, especially with the, the ad stuff that's going on in YouTube right now, I definitely get Super Chat. But I see a lot of, like, huge YouTubers turning on Super Chat and exploiting the system when, when really they don't need it. I mean, if they want to do that, that's fine. That's, that's their call. I just, I don't really want to do it personally because I don't feel like I have to. And I don't feel like you guys have to donate to me. Because I'm not that badly off that I'm, I'm like month on month paycheck and I'm like struggling to do YouTube. I'm, I'm very, very lucky with the style of YouTube I get to do and where I am in YouTube and the position I'm in. And I, as I said, it's very nice that you guys want to support me. I want to help out and help out your favorite creators. That, that's really cool. But I'd, I'd also be wary of it because you, you might have a lot of bigger YouTubers who are exploiting the system, getting like that extra buck when really they don't need it. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to shit all over other YouTubers either. Like, as I said, people can do what they want. I don't, I don't have to agree with it, but if that's really what they want to do, then by all means. I just, I, I also don't want to promote this attitude of elitism in the chat. Because if you donate, say if you donate $5, then your message gets highlighted. And I don't know if it's, if you get a certain amount of messages for that $5, or if it's timed, because the super chat thing seems to count down when you do it. Like a little bubble shows up in your name on top of the chat. So, I, I don't know how it works exactly, because I haven't been able to turn it on. But, say, there's somebody out there in the community who has a lot of money to spare. And then all of a sudden, they can donate a lot of money, and their stuff gets highlighted a lot. So they get seen more than other people in the chat. And then, because they have more money to spare to be able to see, to, to be able to be seen in the chat, then people who are less well off or don't have as much money to be able to put in the chat, who have really nice things to say and have a real proper message to say, they might not get hurt as much because they don't have the money to donate to that kind of thing. To be able to be seen more than other people. So there's that real weird elitism, favoritism side of things that can happen with that sort of donation. And that's something that's very scary to me. Because I, I don't want that to happen. And I don't want YouTubers to go down the path of, like, sitting around and just, like, begging for money or asking for donations or only reading the donated messages. Because then it, it ruins that idea of, like, everyone's equal and everyone has a fair game on YouTube. Because that's the beauty of YouTube is that anybody can do YouTube. I got very lucky in what I get to do on YouTube. I got, I got a very lucky break when it came to stuff and I worked my ass off to do it. But at the same time, there's a lot of luck involved. And, like, anybody can do that. Anybody can do what I did. Just sit down, be super dedicated, put, put a lot of hours into it, and hope that things happen for you. And that's a really beautiful thing on YouTube. And I don't want to see it turn into, like, a money thing, like a pay-to-win type of thing, almost. That's, that's not a very good analogy. But you, you know what I mean. You get what I mean. I don't know. I have a lot to talk about on the, on the topic. And I'd rather have somebody else here kind of having, like, a discussion about it. Almost like a, a debate of sorts and different opinions and everything. Because there might be some aspects to it that I'm not thinking about. It is really cool for a, a charity type of thing. Like, if, if I wanted to do a charity and I just opened up Super Chat to donate to that, then it might be a cool idea. Then again, that's also a bit sketchy because then the money comes to me and then I have to bring it on to the charity and I don't really want that. I'd rather have no money come into my hands. I'd rather an actual charitable organization manage the money because it's safer and I know that... Well, it's, it's just more transparent on my end, I think. Because if the money came to me and then I said, oh, the Super Chat made this amount of money. I'm not that I'd ever, ever lie about those types of things, but it's always good to be wary of people. <laughs> Especially when money's involved because a lot of people change when money happens. I don't know. Oh, Luzu's here. Hi, Luzu! Everyone say hi. Er, uh, Luzu. I'm sorry, my Spanish is terrible. That and the fact that it doesn't exist. Cena said chat is nice. <laughs> Holy shit, chat is spam. I know, man. I'm really hoping for the day when YouTube get better chat implementation. They'll get there. It just takes a long time. We might, we might have to do 
Twitch at some point, but I, I just like that I can go on. I don't have to spam out that I'm streaming. I can just go on and like live stream on YouTube. But because you're all here already, because I do YouTube anyway, and the main audience is here, once I just start streaming, everyone's here. And that's great. I like that. A lot of YouTubers are in YouTube for the money, but everyone should know that you, Jack, are in it for the fun and your fans not for the money. Thank you. I'm glad at least that still comes across. I'm always worried about that. Because I see so many other people do things and like, so many other YouTubers do things and like, oh, that looks really bad because it looks like you're promoting this, that, and the other for money. And I, I like, I know, I probably overcompensate in the opposite direction myself. Because I'm even afraid to like, promote some stuff that go into the merch stores. Because I'm, I'm worried that people will think that I'm in it for the money. Or I'm, I'm almost afraid to promote anything that I do in case people think I want more views or more subs. Because as much as, as much as you can see the character that I am, I'm glad that you can see that I'm not in it for that. But there's a lot of people out there who just have the stigma against larger YouTubers. And as soon as they do anything like that, if they don't know me, then it looks like I'm doing that kind of thing. So I'd rather just avoid that completely because at this point in where I am on YouTube, like it'd be so easy to just turn on Super Chat if I had it <laughs> and like make bank and tell people to buy all my merch and to do this, that and the other and make a book about nothing and do a YouTube Red Show that's not about anything. Like these different types of things. They could like promote the channel so much more and bring it so much further. But it, it's such hollow, it, it's such hollow progress. I, I like doing things that mean something to me. And that's why I'm trying like the tour thing that I'm trying to get done. I'm trying to make sure it's something that I'm actually proud of and something that's like a really great unique experience for people. And not just banking on the name Jack Jacksepticeye and going out there and saying hi or just talking and saying catchphrases like booper duper and speed is key and just making bank off the name. I don't know, that's, that's not the way I want to do things. But it's also a hard position to be in because it's hard to talk about that and it's hard to say my feelings on these things without sounding like I'm trying to shit all over other YouTubers because I'm always talking about building each other up instead of tearing each other down. I don't want to make it seem like I think that I'm better than people because that's, that's not the case. It's just some things that are a bit shady that I think need to bring people's attention to so people are aware and people are not just blindsided and don't have the wool pulled over their eyes and manipulated by someone just because they like them. Because it's really nice that you guys like me and that you're here all the time and you respect me and you like what I do but I, I never want you to just go along with things just because it's me. Like, you should always be wary. And if I do something wrong, to call me on it and never just go along with it because it's, oh, it's Jack Jack's guy, I like him as a YouTuber. If I do fucked up things as a person, you're allowed to tell me that I'm doing that. Anyway, let's get back to other things. I kind of went off on a tangent there for a little while. Let's just sit down with some smooth jazz. Oh, uh, yeah. Sean Sensual Steam here. Here to tell you that boom bop zippity pow, baby. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Try to make sure I'm not clipping the mic. Am I okay? I guess I could just turn it down here. Yeah. That's okay. Somebody said it's over, it's finally over, the spam has stopped. Nah, dude. <laughs> it never stops. What's up, Jack? Nice voice. Thanks, bruh. But I always, I always look like this. Even in day to day life, I go around like this. I look like I'm scowling all the time. I need to, oh, maybe that's why my eyebrows are huge, because they're getting worked out all the time, so the follicles are just super productive. <laughs> I remember when I was younger and I had to go to uh, a nurse because I had asthma when I was younger. And I had to go for a checkup to see if my lung capacity was improving. Have any of you had asthma or had to do like a breath test where you get the, the giant, like, it looks like a giant recorder that you just have to go <sighs> into? And it's not like a. <sighs> Yeah, it's like a full open mouth, like, and a little meter goes up to see how strong your, your lung capacity has gotten. And I had to go to do that, and she was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah. And I was like eight at the time. She said, you always look angry. My mom was like, you always look like that. Can you do your May voice? Sure, no problem. What, what do you want me to say? I mean, I really like taco. Tacos are the best! Tacos. <laughs> oh, my throat's right up. I should probably go get myself a little water. Your deep voice is so hot. That's not even my deep voice. That's like a, oh, yeah. My deep voice would be, hey, how's it going? Sean, sensual steam here. But that's, that's the overdone, like, raper here. Kind of thing. I need to get myself an effects rack so I can just turn on, like, chorus and reverb and everything. So I can just click a button and then be like, Death walks among you. It's fun. It's my favorite Overwatch voice to do. Do your great voice, dude! Yeah, hell yeah! Everybody should do a great voice because it builds you full of energy! <laughs> oh, I love him. What are your personal experiences with mental health issues? That's a very good question. Because the thing about mental health is that a lot of times stuff goes overlooked. Because people feel a certain way and then it's like, oh, well, I'm just feeling down today. Or they react to certain things certain ways consistently and they think it's just part of their personality or their character. But it could definitely be something, like, mental health related that needs to be looked at and helped with. So, like, there's probably a lot of stuff that I've, I've gone through myself or stuff that I've seen or people who have gone through stuff that I didn't even realize were mental health issues. Some people in my family have gone through some stuff. Um, nothing, nothing crazy, but, like, stuff with bipolar and depression and things like that and some memory stuff. I, I don't have, like huge experience with that kind of stuff. So, and that's why I'm always wary about talking about it as well, because I'd rather know more about it than just saying like, hey, go out there and do better. Yeah, if you smile, all your problems will go away. Yeah, be brave. Kind of stuff. And that, that's nice. It's nice to want to instill confidence in people. But I'd, I'd also like to be realistic and talk about stuff in a more productive way instead of just giving you hollow advice like, go out there and do the thing. I don't know. Even though sometimes I do that anyway. Um, and a lot of times it's for my own benefit to like boost myself and boost other people as a byproduct of that. I know, if you're trying to instill confidence in other people, if you're trying to motivate other people and make them feel happier in any way, shape, or form, I don't, I don't want to belittle that because that's an, an admirable thing to do. Jack said the guy is a fucking N word. Really, dude? Well, now this is happening. Bye. Sorry, chat. I don't, I don't.
don't deal with nonsense. I really should uh, sit down and like get some mods together. But it's really hard to get some mods that like I trust. And who are, who are willing to be able to like put time in every day. You'd need like a whole group of moderators to do things. Just to delete the shit like that. And spam is kind of back on YouTube lately and it's really hard to get rid of. Because no matter what I blacklist it still fucking shows up. Sure, would you voice yourself in a fighting game? I would love to. That'd be super cool. Because you get to do all the like... And then all the like... Get hit in the face. That'd be fucking awesome. Why do people come on here to spread hate? I don't, I don't understand why anybody goes on the internet to spread hate. Well, I mean, I guess I get it. But at the same time, some of it is just like nonsense. That they don't even mean they're just here for... Attention, I guess. It's just funny. When you, when you like think about the person in that position posting those messages at that time. Like, why? <laughs> Like, ha ha ha, get him, ha 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 It's just, the more you think about it, the more ridiculous it actually gets. Can you do an impression of an American trying to sound like you? Oh, this is a good one. Solitary Sapphire. <laughs> this is a very good one. Because so many people do impressions of me on YouTube, like other YouTubers and everything, and then I have people come to me saying, you should do this person's impression, it's so good. And then I listen to it, I'm like, this is terrible. I don't sound like that. Because what it usually comes to is them doing a high-pitched Irish accent. And people just hear the Irish accent, like, oh my god, that sounds like Jack Sapphire. It's like, top of the world, yeah, my name's Jack Sapphire, how's it going? It's like, I don't sound like that. Because they don't even have that strong Irish accent anymore. So when people do an impression of me, it's like, Top of the world, my name is Jack They usually try and get the energy behind it and sort of the, the pitch, but they, ne they never get it just right. So it's kind of funny. I love listening to them, though. The fact that anyone wants to do an impression of me is super flattering because I'm always trying to do impressions of other people. So to have them done of me is super cool. <laughs> Jack, what's Tyler Joseph's line speech? It's five years old, but it preaches being kind online in a hella good way. I like your use of hella. Isn't Tyler Joseph one of the guys from 21 Pilots? I could be in big doo-doo bees if I'm wrong about that. If Google would like to work for me, Tyler Joseph. Yeah, he's a singer. I mentioned, I will definitely do that. I've been on a kind of kick lately, listening to stuff like that. Because after Kendrick Lamar's new album came out, fantastic album, kind of listening to some of the messages in that, and listening to like the story behind it, and just his, his mental state, and his, what he's saying about different things. It's really fascinating, and then watching interviews with him, and then I start watching interviews with other people. I don't know, I love, I love watching interviews with people who've gone through some shit, and then came out the other side, because, like, I've gone through some things in my life, but not half as much as some other people out there. So it's nice to be able to listen, and... And hear their stories and watch them like overcome that type of thing and then instill confidence and motivation in other people. Super cool. Do -do 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 -do. You're the most down to earth person, Jack. Thank you. I don't know if that's true, but I appreciate it. I try to be anyway. I try not to let the whole YouTube thing whisk me away too far. Because it's very easy to get lost in it. It's a very, it's a very big industry. Because technically it's show business. But it's a very big industry full of people who want to tell you things that they think you want to hear. And just say yes to you all the time and throw money at you all the time. Especially if you get to a certain point in it. Like, you have some like mobile developers who will just throw money upon money upon money at you to show off the game. And it's like, it's so easy to just take that stuff and go with it and just go, like, disappear. And forget about your audience and just do things for yourself. So, I'm, I'm glad that I got to a point in YouTube where I kind of like went against that. Because it's, it's weird as well. Because people are like, well, just don't do that. And I was like that for a while as well. But it's very easy for it to just happen. And then all of a sudden you're in it and you forget where you were and forget everything that you... Forget everything that you stood for. So I, I really don't want that to happen. So that's why these are fun. New Gorillaz album? I, I bought it for Cena yesterday when it came out. Because she's a big Gorillaz fan. I'm, I like Gorillaz, but I wouldn't be a, a huge fan of them. I don't like listening to their music all the time. I don't know that much about them. But we were listening to the new album today when we were just downstairs. And I, I can't really get into it. Some songs are nice. I like Saturn Bars. And there was another one. I can't remember the name of it. Did it begin with an M? That was really cool. And some bits of other songs are really cool. But as a whole, I just didn't really jam along to it. What do you guys think of it? Any of you, those of you who are like big Gorillaz fans who have listened to it? Because I'm curious to see what big Gorillaz fans think of it. Can you play more Overwatch? I, I do intend on playing more Overwatch eventually. Not tonight. I won't be doing it on this stream. But I do want to play more Overwatch soon. So I'm going to figure out OBS and figure out the best ways of making sure that I don't get any lag when I play it next time. Because when I play Overwatch, because I'm so used to playing Overwatch here at 144 hertz, 144 FPS, with no lag whatsoever. And even then, sometimes like my aim is a bit off. So if anything drops like that after playing it for so long, then if for so long at that high a frame rate, then it's kind of hard to play it on anything else. Can you do a backflip? Not on ground. I can do one on a trampoline. Or at least I could the last time I was on a trampoline. It's actually pretty easy to do on trampoline, but on, on the ground I can't. I used to be able to do front flips. But that was when I was much younger and much smaller and much, much more spry. Jack, have you ever thought about being a therapist? Your videos are so funny and therapeutic. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, but I, I did want to, well I didn't want to be one, but I did think about becoming a therapist or a psychiatrist or something a while ago. Again, because I said that I love human behavior and I love understanding it and figuring it out and I... But I'm, I don't know nearly qualified enough to be that kind of thing. Because I can say a lot of stuff and I know a lot of stuff but at the end of the day a lot of it should be taken with a grain of salt because like my word is not gospel. How long will your stream be? I don't know. I've been streaming for about 50 minutes so far. That's been fun. I don't really want to stop anytime soon. I like this. How do you 
up these chat posts, Jack. Well, they fly by and then I scroll up, which stops the chat, and then there's a blue bar or a blue button that shows up to go to the bottom of the chat. So I kind of just scroll back up and take a few things here and there that I see. Do your germ voice. Hey guys, I'm germ. Yeah, I had it in my house. Um, I, I, I just came out. <laughs> my, my germ voice isn't. It had nothing to do with like the tone of the voice. It was just the the speed of the voice. It was kind of just my voice, but speaking things very quickly because I, I just like the idea of him being a bird, like chirping all the things. Like, <laughs> I love gorillas. Saturn Bars is one of my favorite songs from them. That's pretty cool. Wait, is it one of your favorites because it's new? And you haven't had gorillas in a while? And it's the honeymoon period? Or is it because you actually really think it's a really good gorilla song? Because my, my favorite gorilla song is either... Um, it's either Feel Good Inc. or Clint Eastwood, I think. Is it Clint Eastwood that I'm thinking of? Very good question. This is this show you how much gorillas I actually fucking know. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. The one with the, the monkeys and the... Or the gorillas in the music video. Jack, what is the adpocalypse? I never understood what it was. P.S. I'm late to the stream, so sorry if you already answered that. I didn't, Jake. Well, welcome to the stream. Better late than never. Thank you for showing up. The adpocalypse thing on YouTube is... Well, again, I'm not hugely versed in it, but what I, what I understand it to be is that... YouTube, or brands on YouTube, people who put ads on YouTube, like companies, just any companies that you've seen ads for on YouTube, suddenly started seeing their ads on stuff that had, like, the N-word in it. Or that, like, the song was Alabama N-word or something. I can't remember what it started off. The Wall Street Journal went off and showed this around, and some companies then pulled out of YouTube, realizing that their ads could have been shown on potentially harmful stuff. And then... A bunch of companies pulled out of YouTube, and YouTube lost like $750 million, I think, which to YouTube is like nothing, but that's, it's still a serious dent at the end of the day, and that's like, it's, it's enough to them financially, it probably didn't mean a whole lot, but for headlines, that's a pretty big number to have, and then more people started pulling out, and then ad rates dropped for a bunch of YouTubers, there's a lot more politics behind the scenes about all this, I'm just giving a brief rundown for like what it means for like the YouTuber's point of view, and then YouTube in retaliation to this as a response started clamping down very heavily on content that had any sort of controversial topics in them, any sort of like triggering things in the titles, any sort of triggering things in the thumbnails, triggering topics, violence, gore, those types of things. Anything that's to do with politics that kind of went a bit too far, that was very controversial, which they probably shouldn't have. Actually, not probably shouldn't have. They shouldn't have because they're overcorrecting for a problem, which everyone's kind of freaking out about it now, but I think it'll probably bounce back eventually. So a lot of YouTubers' revenue just got completely cut off. Me, personally, I wasn't affected that much. There, there was a, a slight drop, but nothing alarming and nothing scary because my content is video game related and it, it didn't really bring up any of the topics that people were talking about. But other, other YouTubers who were doing slightly more controversial or edgier topics or videos have seen their revenue cut by half or even as much as 80%. Some people had their videos go up and then be demonetized immediately. So it's very scary in that regard. And that's why you see a lot of people saying they're going to Twitch now and going... Uh, in that regard, turning on Super Chat is a cool idea. Um, because some people are losing like huge amounts of revenue. And for smaller YouTubers, that's very scary. Because if you're, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and all of a sudden your revenue is gone, then you need to kind of recoup somewhere else like Patreon or something. But a lot of YouTubers are using this as an excuse to get more money when really... Because this is the thing, if your revenue drops a lot, but you're still making enough to get by, then that's a different story than if your revenue drops a lot, or your revenue drops completely, and you're making no money. There's, there's a very different thing going on. Um, and some people whose who's revenue's dropping by, like, a lot, and then they're kind of freaking out, and then they're, they kind of need, they're kind of freaking out in that regard and doing different things. I don't know. It's a really weird thing to talk about. And I, I don't, because I don't have much first-hand experience with it, and I, I again, I, I don't really know the, the full ins and outs of it. But that's kind of a, a very quick brief rundown of what's going on. I encourage you to look up more about it, if it interests you. Um, but hopefully it'll bounce back. I have a feeling it'll bounce back because it's like something happens, something controversial happens. News outlets go to brands, brands pull out of YouTube, YouTube sees the problem, overcorrects, and then I think brands and YouTube run opposite ends of the spectrum, everything will kind of blend back together in the middle, we'll find the middle ground for it all. And it might not go back to just as good as it was, but I think we'll, we'll reach a, a nice compromise eventually. Because YouTube should always be about making, making fun stuff, making stuff that you want to make and getting your stuff out there to people and not really having to worry about YouTube getting in the way of that. You should be able to upload your stuff within reason. Obviously you can't upload a video of you killing someone or you yelling racist remarks. I, like at the end of the day, they, they need to have some sort of safeguard. And YouTube has that safeguard already. It's just sometimes it doesn't always fire off the way it should. Um, I don't know. That's why YouTube, there isn't as many ads as before. Before, there used to be ads in half a video. But watching lately, I don't see many ads anymore. Well, mid ads are stuff that YouTubers themselves put in. If you ever see an ad in the middle of a video, it's, it's put in by the YouTuber. So if you're not seeing as many of those, it might be because they're just not putting in as many. I don't know. I don't know. YouTubers on, on, at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> I love YouTube and I love YouTubers, but man, nothing pisses me off more than YouTubers sometimes. Because when things like this happen, a lot of them get very entitled. And suddenly they're like, oh my god, why is this happening? And uh, sure, we should know. YouTube really should tell us about these things. And you should, YouTube should really come out and say, hey, this is going on. Be prepared if, if your revenue drops. Because that sucks. YouTube telling us nothing really, really sucks. And I think that they really need to communicate better with their, with their platform and with the people who use their platform. Um, no, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> my bad. I lose my train of thought very quickly lately. That sucks. It can all be solved with a fucking Pepsi, man. A nice cold beepers. I do more Rick and Morty vids. I don't know, I didn't see anything else in the game that was worth really doing a video on. Because there was nothing, there was nothing else really left in the game to do. So I might, I might not go back to it. Fuck you, asshole. Thanks, Logan. Appreciate it, buddy. Love the support, it's great. <laughs> Can you purr into the microphone? Okay. Let me pause the music for a second and turn up this. Now we're super loud. 
showing up. <laughs> That's also my predator impression. It's like using your uvula at the back of your neck to like shake against your neck. You should do a shout out contest like PewDiePie did. I have talked about this before and I said I wasn't going to do one because I felt like I needed the right time to do it. And I didn't think a shout out from me would, would go very far. Um... But if, you, if YouTube like continues in the trend that it's going and stuff, really is that hard to become a YouTuber these days? Because like right now, it is harder than ever. Which kind of stuff? Well, it's harder and it's better at the same time. It's harder to make a living off YouTube. But YouTubers also have stuff in place now to be to make it to get more subscribers quicker than when I started or other people started. Because now stuff, some stuff that goes to the trending page, I've seen people with like hundred subscribers on the trending page in Ireland, which is really cool. So in some ways, there's better potential than ever for people to make it on YouTube. But if if, if revenue is lower than ever as well, then it's harder for people to make it their job. So if, if stuff went like that, then I'd consider doing it. Just, just give people a bit of a boost. People who are really into YouTube. Because that's what I want to do. I want to find the people who are really into it. I love people who watch me, Mark, or Felix, or Katie Neistat, or somebody else do YouTube, and then are like, oh, I want to do that because it's just on a whim. I'd rather people who are super into it, who really have a passion for it, who really have something to share. Because I feel like they're the people who would definitely take advantage of that. Because when I got the shout-out from Felix, I could have easily just gone nowhere with that. There's so many people who were in that shout-out that went nowhere. And I took that shout-out, and I, I took that opportunity, and I went for it. I, I took what I had, and I think the channel still would have got somewhere without that, but that was definitely a really great kick. And not only a kick for the channel, but a kick for me. It lit a fire underneath me, and I really took hold of that opportunity, and went full force at it, and I worked my damn ass off on YouTube. And that's the thing, you really have to work at it. We, we didn't just start YouTube and put in like a couple hours a day, and then all of a sudden we, we made it big. Like, we really worked our ass off. These days we're very lucky that we can upload stuff and people will watch it anyway, because we cultivated that audience and the community. But when we started off doing this, I... Like, anyone who's made it big on YouTube, I... I don't know anybody, personally, who hasn't put in a shit ton of effort. Like talking to Mark and Felix about it, and like like Wade and Bob and all these other YouTubers who I'm friends with. Like we really put our work in to do this. It, 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 sometimes it doesn't look like we do because we make it seamless. We make it seem like stuff just keeps coming out constantly, and that's the way it should be. I think that's what a professional should do. Is to so, is that you get the content without any of the, the mess, which is what I always try to do. I try to be consistent. I try to keep the content coming, and so that nothing really gets in the way. So you still get you get your entertainment out of it. But I still put in a lot of work, and that's the thing. If you want to make it on YouTube, you gotta put in the work. I, I used to do like 12-hour days on YouTube. And then there was times I was doing college and YouTube at the same time. And I had no time for anything else. And I did that for like three years before I got an editor to help me. Which today is the year anniversary of Robin working with me on the channel. Um, and I tried to say with me every time and not for me. Because he, he's been very collaborative and very, very helpful. And I fucking love that dude. So that's really cool. I, he, because I used to just do YouTube constantly and have no time for anything else. I would, I would wake up, do my thumbnails, do the tags, titles, everything. Then upload the videos. And then i just go straight into recording after that. Do the videos, eat. And then just go straight into editing and go to bed. And I would have no time for anything else. And I love that. But after a while I started to realize that it was really stressing me out. And getting inside my head. And it was starting to affect... It was starting to affect the way I did videos because I started speeding up the recordings for no reason because I had to get the time to edit them. And I didn't like that, so I, I, Robin came on board and was such a huge help and helped me get my life back. And then I started going out with Cena, so it was nice to have time with her. And it's nice to have time to go to the movies like tonight, and it's nice to have time to just sit down and play Overwatch and play some games and have some sort of a social life outside of the channel. Don't get me wrong, I still have a huge drive for YouTube, but you know what I mean. If, if you do anything over and over and over again, it can become very monotonous. And you don't want to lose your passion for that thing, especially if it's something that you love. It's like if you love making wooden furniture, say, and that's like your absolute passion, after a while you're going to get annoyed with that if it's every single day. And you don't want to get annoyed with it, because you get annoyed with it for no reason. You get annoyed with it because you're doing it all the time, not because you're getting bad at it or because you lose your passion for it. Boo -doo -doo -boo -doo. Hey Jack, I know you probably missed this, but I just want to say thank you. I have a blood clot in my brain, and it's looking like I won't make the year. I spent my days dwelling, but then I found you. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's awful. I, I, I don't know what to say at the fear of sounding insensitive. I'm really sorry to hear that. If I can help in any sort of way possible at all by doing this or doing my videos, then... That, that makes me happy that I can help. I, I hope. Keep on fighting. Stay, stick in there. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to know what kind of situation you're in. Um, but I, I definitely empathize with it. So I, I hope things go well for you. And I wish you nothing but happiness. Tell us about channel analytics. I, I don't really know what I could say. Because there's stuff I can't talk about. Like I can't talk about the revenue that's made on the channel due to contracts and CPMs. And, that, that, and I just wouldn't want to talk about that. Because then everyone looks at you differently and treats you differently and talks differently. Because then there's some people out there who are like, oh, he makes more money than I thought. And then there's other people who are like, oh, he's not making as much as I thought. Like, you, you can't win in that type of situation. So it's just better not to talk about it. That, and it's just rude to ask anybody how much they make in their job anyway. Regardless. But other analytics, I don't really know what else you can say. Oh, let's, let's share a fun analytic. Let's see how many minutes people have watched the Jacksepticeye channel in total. The channel actually passed 7 billion views, like, a couple of days ago, which is fucking nuts. There's almost enough views per person on the planet now. Which absolutely blows my mind, and I'm completely floored by. That's a very humbling figure, thank you. But we can look at the watch time in minutes because then it gives you the watch time in minutes in years. So I'll tell you how many years people have watched Jacksepticeye for since I started the channel. There's 58 billion minutes of the channel watched over all my videos. And that equates to 110,000 years. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. People have watched the equivalent of 110,000 years of Jacksepticeye. <laughs> oh my God. 7 billion views and... 
average view duration is eight minutes. <laughs> so those are things that I can share. 110,000 years, mother of God. Oh, seriously, thank you. The fact that <laughs> any of that happened is crazy. Let alone that it's at that kind of figures is just fucking mind-boggling. I'm so lucky to be able to do what I do. Uh, it's all because of the people who watch the channel, so thanks. I, I never want to lose sight of that. I never want to look at the numbers and go, yeah, I'm hot shit. Because, like, like, those numbers. As much as YouTubers like to boast about the numbers, those numbers are not the YouTuber. Those numbers are the people who watch the YouTuber. It's a, YouTube is a very collaborative effort. And I could sit here and be like, yeah, you watch my shit. Give me them numbers. But no, seriously, thanks. That's super cool. Jack, you should get another tattoo. I actually have an appointment to get a tattoo on Tuesday that I forgot about because I was going to wait to get one when I move but then I forgot that they already put my name down after I got this one switched up because I had this one that everyone knows about and then eh, focus but then it healed kind of poorly so I went back in and she twisted it up a super nice lady who did it um so I, I got an appointment to get another one done on the 2nd of May because they were booked up until then so I could go in I'm, I'm, getting, I'm planning on getting the, the Shadow of the Colossus glyph like here so that would be like my, my weak point you're scouting again god damn it she just get you know those things ah put me something in the eye ah <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> Those things that people put in their mouths that open up their mouth and constantly smile, I should get that for my eyebrows. So I'm just like this all the time. And then get one for my eyes, I want for my teeth. So I'm always like. <laughs> Ribbon piece. I know, I'm a fucking eye. Like Vernon's tattoo, yeah. Exactly like Vernon's tattoo. And I had the idea to get that before I actually met Vernon. And then he was like, oh yeah, I have that. And I was like, cool. When are you moving? In a couple of weeks. Like two and a half weeks, I think. So fucking stressful, man. Trying to get everything organized, because it's not just making sure that all our stuff gets there. It's making sure that our video is prepped and ready to go before we actually go. And then people come and collect all this shit, and then that's shipped over. And then I have to make sure I get over there and have enough videos prepped for when I'm there. So in case this stuff doesn't arrive. And then I also have to cut off all bills and utilities that are here. I have to change over so many things into a new address, into a new place. I have to get new utility bills when I'm over there. Um, and because I have YouTube and I have a company and all that kind of stuff, I have to move a lot of shit in that regard. It's so stressful, there's so much to it. It's like all the stuff you're seeing with the packing and everything, that's like... That's like a very tiny fraction of what actually needs to be done. Because it's not like I'm moving down the street, I'm moving an entire country. Thankfully, it's just the UK, so it's not that bad. Jack, I look at you as a true role model. I think you're funny and your videos are hilarious. Do you have any tips for small YouTubers? Thank you. I feel like when you have enough people looking up to you or looking to you, not just looking up to you, but when enough eyeballs are on you, you kind of have a responsibility to use that in a, in a positive way. I mean, you don't have to. You can, technically, you can do whatever the hell you want. Anybody can do whatever the hell they want. But I, I definitely felt like there was a big responsibility. Because not, not a lot of people have this type of voice that they can use. Not a lot of people are lucky enough to have this much sway over things, for lack of a better term and this much influence over a thing. So I'd rather use it for a force for good and speak for the people who, who can't be spoken for sometimes. Um, and tips for smaller YouTubers, work your ass off. If you really want to do YouTube, then really, really work at it. You don't always have to start off doing something super unique. If you can, it will help a lot. But if you look up to people, then maybe incorporate some of the things that they're doing. Because a lot of people will say, be unique, do, do you, and yeah, definitely do you, and put a lot of your own personality into it. But I mean, everyone kind of draws inspiration from the people they look up to when they start off something like this. If you draw art, you kind of copy some of the things that other artists do that you look up to. If you act, you kind of take on some of the acting traits that other people do. If you do YouTube, I certainly took on a lot of traits from people that I watched when I started off. So it's kind of unavoidable, but definitely try and put as much of your own personality into it because then people who come on, if, if a lot of your personality is in your content and if you're really honest in what you're doing and you're sharing your personality transparently, then the people that come on and stay will like you for you. And they won't be here because they, they like the type of commentary you do because it's like somebody else's or something like that. So if you're honest, then people, you have honest people who watch your content. And that's always been more admirable to me because you can, you can certainly just start off and say like 99% of people won't recognize this and have a clickbait title and thumbnail and start getting a load of subscribers that way but the people who watch your content will kind of be hollow people that they'll just be there because you're clickbaiting and then yeah, I don't know if people want to do that again as I said you can do anything you want but for me personally I'd always rather to do YouTube with the community aspect in mind and people watch you for you and if people like if your sense of humor comes across in your videos or your sense of style or anything and people latch onto that because they share the same interest and in style and humor then those are people that you're going to want to keep around because those are the people who will boost you in the right directions and I think honesty and communication are a big thing. I always come back to three things, three, three things as the Irish coming out, is... <sighs> with me, it's always been interactivity, variety, and honesty, I think. Th those would be the things that I kind of come to. Community kind of fits in there as well with the interactivity aspect of things. Um, th those have always been huge pillars for me when I did my channel. Those are the ones I always fall back on. There's more stuff to fit within that, that, those umbrellas, but I think if you stick to those, that'd be a good thing. Because you can start off doing one very specific thing. Um, I don't know, let's say you just you happen upon a game, Minecraft. You, you, you like Minecraft and you do it a lot and that's like your main go-to. If you rely on it too much, you might get a lot of followers, you might love it and it's all great, but after a while that will get tiring. Nobody can do the exact same thing forever on YouTube and it's, it's breaking away from that. That would be the hardest thing to do because you'll feel like your audience are abandoning you. You'll feel like you're betraying them, even though it's the best thing for you to branch away from one specific thing. To keep your channel healthy, to keep your mental health going in a good direction. So getting that variety early on is a very big factor, I think. I, I always had a lot of variety when I started off the channel. And when I got the shout-out, I was doing a lot. I was doing like two GTA 5 videos a day for like a week. Then the shout-out happened I was like, okay, I can't do that. Because that would get super boring for people and I, I was just running out of ideas. I could have just kept
like doing that, but then you get a very one specific type of audience. And I've always been a big advocate for people liking me for me. Half, kind of, some for the game, some for me. If people just come for the game, then they'll turn on you immediately when you when you stop doing that game. If they come for you, then there's a bit more understanding there. There's a lot more respect if people come for you as a person. They understand when things go wrong because things will go wrong. And that's what I'm hoping will happen when I have to move. If I have to do, if I have to cut down the videos a small bit just to make sure that mentally I'm well set to move. It's the same when tour stuff is happening. Because there's some other big stuff happening later in the year that I, I can't talk about yet. And it, like it's a really big deal for me. And I really want to make sure that it's done right. And these are things that are going to create some outstanding memories for me and some really outstanding like life forming, personality forming experiences. These are going to be like life molding experiences for me and I want to make sure that they're done right and I'm not stressing myself out over them. Not to say that I'm going to abandon you guys. I'd never do that. I just want to try and find a happy middle ground. Do you pay Robin to edit or is it just him helping you? Of course I pay Robin to edit for me. He edits like two videos a day for me. Every day. I couldn't possibly ask him to do that without any sort of recoupment. It's always funny. It's like when people ask if I get paid to do YouTube. It's like, yeah, of course I do. Uh, there's no way I could dedicate this much time to doing YouTube or do 1am streams if I didn't get paid to do it. Not to say I wouldn't if I didn't. Uh, it's just that because YouTube is my sole, my sole revenue that I can dedicate so much more time to it. God damn it, clickbait. It doesn't tell me when these messages were sent, so I don't know if that's in reference to what I said, or if you're saying I'm clickbaiting. Jack, thank you so much for making me smile every day. I suffer from anxiety and depression, and your videos always make my day. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. That's super sweet of you to say. I'm glad I can help in any way I can. Can you show us your play button? Why well, show them in videos before? One of them's on the shelf back there. You can kind of see it, it's like right at the bottom. So here, the other one is on the shelf behind me. The diamond one is just sitting in its box there. And then the gold one is over in this like closet area over here. The gold one is fucking obnoxious. I mean, it's super cool, but it's huge. And it weighs a ton. What is the clock in Ireland? I think you mean what is the time in Ireland? It's 2.40 a.m. right now, which is super late. So we're probably gonna have to wrap this up soon-ish. If no, I'm not. I'm having fun and I don't want to. You were the brightest in my eyes. I knew the reason why I made it. You were the brightest in my eyes. I knew the reason why I made a YouTube channel. This will help me in life. And you were a little cunt. <laughs> yeah, cute little cunt. Yeah. That's funny. Not meant in a, an offensive way at all, by the way, for everyone who's going to react to that. Minimalistic or complicated tattoos? I'm minimalism all the way. In so many aspects of my life, I love minimalism. I like just simple line art tattoos. I don't even really want to get any tattoos that have color in them. I, I love really, like, clean line art tattoos. They're just, oh. When the line art just right. YouTube for the money, but you do have good intentions, don't get me wrong. But you do have to pay things, and the most efficient way to do that is a job. Job equals money. Yeah, technically, yes, we all do it for money, because rent does need to be paid, food does need to be bought, I do need to survive and live. Um, it's when it's when money is your sole, like, reason for doing something, that money sings a small bit. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome that I get to be paid to be able to do YouTube, because it's the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm so lucky that I get to do it, and it's so awesome to be able to do that, and sit down and be able to play video games, and talk to you guys. I'm very privileged in that regard, so it's super cool. But then the money aspect of it is just a very nice, happy thing, like my hobby turned into my job. And that's awesome, but it would never be like the sole reason I do things. Because then I'd start doing it in a really weird way. I'd start making really bad decisions on YouTube if I if I did it for the money. Wow, chat just like fucking exploded all of a sudden. I thought that too, Jack, but tattoos are addictive. You may want to go bigger, bolder, vibrant tattoos. People keep saying that, and I, don't know, I didn't get the addiction aspect of things yet. I don't think it's going to affect me that much. People also said smoking. Once you start smoking, you'll never stop. And I tried smoking one time, and it was fucking disgusting, and I'll never do it ever again. <laughs> so, I guess that didn't really work. I guess I guess I just don't follow your rules, society. <laughs> People freaked out about that as well, when I said that I tried smoking. They were like, oh my god, Jack smoked? It's like, I didn't habitually smoke. I like, tried it once or twice, when I was drunk, and I was 18. Like, stupidly trying it, and it made me super lightheaded, and I like, vomited, and I didn't like it at all, and I'm not going to do it again, ever. It's not like I started smoking for like a month, or anything like that. still alive, it's been so long. Yeah, it's been like an hour and a half. It's been cool, man. It's been fun. I like it. I like it a lot. Who's your favorite character from Rick and Morty? Probably just Rick. Rick or the Meeseeks? Meeseeks are awesome. I hope they come back in season three. I think they will. Because they didn't bring them back for season two, and then everyone was kind of disappointed that they weren't back. 
So I think there's enough demand there to bring them back just for a little fun thing. They can even just do them in, because Rick and Morty do the, the cable, the multiverse cable TV show episodes. So it'd be fun if they did like a, a Misik show in the middle of that somewhere. If they don't want to put them in the main storyline. Not that you need any approval on it, but so approved the facial hair choice. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot to me. Some, somebody earlier, like, wrote down something saying, Jack, I think you may, I, I regret you shaving because it looks gross. I'm like, well, thanks. Like, those are the types of things that you keep to yourself. It's like, I did the same. It's not like I could just suddenly change it all of a sudden. And then somebody telling you it looks gross. It's kind of like, well, what's your, what's your end goal here? Are you just trying to make me feel bad? Well, thank you. I like it too. I mean, I did like the, the little chin strap that was going on. Because it did frame my face. And it did look nice. But when you look at it super up close, it wasn't like super thick hair. And I think it looked kind of weird. And then this side was all patchy, so it didn't look as nice. And it wasn't as thick as this is. So I'm going to wait for this to like balance out. Because this is just suddenly starting to, to reach and connect. So I let this grow out a bit thicker. And then decide what to do from there. I don't know, it's just facial hair. <laughs> it doesn't change anyone's life in any way, shape, or form. It's just something to look at. Come on, man. It's okay. You don't have to say that you're gonna go out with me, but I mean, I just watch Guardians of the Galaxy and I have no problem saying that Chris Pratt. 
Pratt is a super fucking hunkalicious caveman. I'm a little gay for Chris Pratt. Hell yeah, I am. Do you know how to basic? I don't actually. And I met a lot of the people in his friend circle at VidCon. And they said he was at VidCon. And I've probably seen him walk around and everything. Or maybe they were just shitting on me. <laughs> or maybe they were just like trying to, to pull my leg. Um, maybe he wasn't there at all, but I, I kind of like that I don't know. I love you, Jack, in a totally gay way. There we go. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm a little gay for Chris Pratt. He's awesome. I mean, I know, right? I'm a little gay for Chris Pratt. Looking at him, I'm super gay for Chris Pratt's personality. I'm eating cold chicken nuggets. I'm hungry, okay? Hey, I'm not gonna judge, but hopefully you have some six Szechuan sauce to go with that. I need that Szechuan sauce. Nine more seasons. I love how you support everything, Jack. You're so nice. And I'd love to meet you. You probably won't read this. Aha! <laughs> but I don't mind. I'm happy enough knowing I have to go. I have you to go to. Thank you for always being there. That's super nice. Thank you. That, that's adorable. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, why not support everything? Well, of course I don't support the bad things. <laughs> I think we could all be, do with being a bit more open-minded, a bit more accepting. Because I wasn't always that way. I, I was once very close-minded. So, I'm, I'm learning. I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to grow, I'm trying to be more accepting and more inclusive of things. Jack, is your hair turning yellow? Sure is. I haven't had a diet for like six weeks now. Actually, I can't remember. Go back and look at my last Instagram post with... I won't fucking do that myself. I won't, because I'm curious. When was the last time I actually got my hair dyed? Because I, I uploaded a picture of it when I dyed it on Instagram. Uh, God, it's fucking high level, Jesus. That right, post too many pictures. <laughs> there it is. 14 weeks ago. What? Holy fuck. Really? 14 weeks ago I got my hair dyed. Yeah, oh, the, the fact that it has any sort of color in it at all is amazing. Where's it get dyed since then? I don't think I have. Man, that's mad. I don't know. I'm, I'm debating whether to get it dyed again or not, or just let it go. Okay, it's almost 3 a.m., so I'm gonna end this soon. I'm just gonna go through and see some more questions. If you have any questions, get them in now. Get them in, it's just strange leaving. Are you growing a beard like Jesus? I fucking wish. I would love a beard like Jesus. Do you plan on doing any kind of moving video? No. I'm gonna make sure that the move goes as smoothly and as stress free as possible, so I'm gonna make sure that all my focus is on the actual move instead of worrying about doing a video out of it. What is your most embarrassing moment? Okay, I talked about this before, but. I used to be an altar boy when I was like really young um, because it was a way of going to church without having to sit and be bored so I actually got to do something. So I'd be up on the altar and there was four of us there and then the collection plate had to go around to, for people to donate money and the collection plates were over on like the baptismal font that was there and the priest told me to go over and get it and like hand it over so people could spread it around to get the, the money going around. So I stood up and I had no idea where they were, the collection plates. So I like, I was like looking around and there was like 200 people in this church looking at me, giggling and the other altar people were kind of giggling at me. The priest was too busy like getting ready for a communion and I had no idea what to do so I just went over and knocked back down again like probably, I probably looked like a fucking tomato. And then I went over and my, um, my now sister's father-in-law uh, went up and like showed me where they were and he let me get them. He didn't go up and get them, which was very nice. He could have just got up and grabbed them and went around with them, but he went up and showed me where they were. And then I got them, so I got some sort of retribution out of it, but... As a young boy, for it to have that happen, crushing. Soul crushing. But funny as fuck to tell now. <laughs> I need more full gameplay series. There will always be full gameplay series going on. I'll have to get back into Paradigm soon when I have more time to record it again. Outlast kind of took a lot of my focus. Um, so I'll get back into Paradigm soon. So I think there's only like one episode left of Paradigm. Holy Paradigm. I thought this was a coffee party. Nah, sadly it's too late for coffee. I do need to sleep eventually. I know, fuck it sucks, right? Stupid human body. Do -do -do. Nice snazzy jazz music, thank you. This is my go-to, like, chill music now. Uh, okay, last question. We're gonna have to make it a good one, even though I put too much pressure on myself to do that. Szechuan sauce or Chris Pratt? Heh, <laughs> put those two together. Szechuan sauce on Chris Pratt. Chris Preshwan. <laughs> okay. And that does it. And the music just ended. How perfect is that? I'm going to end the stream here. It's been an absolute blast hanging out with you guys. I actually stayed on longer than I was supposed to. It's 3 a.m. here now. So I'm just going to go back. Maybe watch some Track and Titan. Chill out. And go to bed. So yeah, it's been super fun. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I know I missed last week's stream. Um, but that's because Ethan was streaming Overwatch for charity. So I joined that. And then I, I didn't have much time outside of that to be able to do anything. But th these streams are super fun. I like them. I like being able to talk and chat and just get thoughts out there and reconnect with you guys. And just, I don't know, chill out and hang out and share an evening with you all. Absolute blast. I, I love these. Uh, how many people are still here? Need to check. 13,000 people still here. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to end the stream by encouraging you guys to go to Mark's channel and watching his stream because they are streaming for charity. Um, how many donations have they actually gotten so far? I don't even know if I can check that. I don't know. What's the oh, 41,000. Holy fucking balls. That's crazy. So go. Go watch uh, Tyler, Amy, Mark, Ethan, and Catherine all stream right now. I don't know what game they're actually playing. 
What game are they playing? I don't know. It looks like a jackpot kind of thing. Is that use your words? Because I brought that to people's attention when we were going to group record. That's a fun game. Um, but we can't really record. It's like a, a group thing. I don't know. Might not be that game at all. Anyway, yes. Go watch them stream and donate if you can. And help them out. And if you can't donate, then spread the stream around and be nice people. And treat them well. And be good things. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. I'll be back soon. You may never know when. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Bye. <laughs>